One specific aspect of this is barrel size for the, the volume pro, uh, level of the part you're producing. Um, standard rule of thumb in the scientific molding world is make sure you're utilizing between 20 and 80 percent of that shot capacity. If you've put um, uh, a small mold in a larger machine because that those are the resources you have available, if you're down into the 5 and 10 percent of barrel utilization, you're going to have a very difficult time establishing selected fill speeds consistently and repeatably from shot to shot. So you don't want to get buried behind that situation where you're, you're underutilizing your barrel capacity. And another important variable is the ability of the, mo the machine to pressurize that cavity. If you're getting into thin walled polycarbonates, you're getting into filled materials, uh, you need to be very careful about press selection based on the expected plastic pressures required to make a good part. From the process standpoint, we need to determine temperatures, temperature selection, uh, need to be able to plot rheology curves or velocity shear rate curves so we can determine appropriate fill times, so on and so forth down the list. Uh, this is an example of a material spec sheet. We want to begin our temperature profiles in the midline of that. Um, we don't want to get backed into a corner to where we're operating high or low because then we don't have any adjustments uh, once we need to, to, uh, to adjust for variation in the process. And those familiar with scientific molding will probably be familiar with the curve on the left. It's a rheology curve or a velocity shear rate curve. Uh, there's a methodology in scientific molding that allows you to do a 10-shot study to create the appropriate data to document that curve and then what comes out of that is shear rates that are most effective for the mold, the material, machine configuration that you're using. Cavity balance study, of course, we finished the IQ phase, we're doing the operational qualification, now we need to know how well our balance design works in reality when we're running the mold. It's a very important step of the OQ. And then DOE. DOE is actually one of the very specific things that are called out in the FDA regulation is using DOE as a tool during the operational qualification. There's some problems associated with DOE. Um, they would be best described as garbage in, garbage out. If you don't pick the correct variables as part of your DOE, the output of that DOE that is indicating um, the, the variables that impact the part you're molding, now you change another area of the process and you get into this loop like this and you're chasing your tail. So it's very important that during the DOE phase, that you select the appropriate variables to go into that DOE. And you want those variables to be from that perspective of the four plastics variables. Plastic conditions, plastic pressure, flow, cooling, and heat. When, you, when the variables you use focused on those four variables, then the DOE is much more efficient and the output of that DOE is going to have direct correlations to the part char uh, characteristics. We need to make sure that we've developed the OQ phase correctly so that we, we get into the production qualification. We're not trying to make continuous adjustments to that process. We get everything squared away, we center our process in the OQ, and our PQ is then our 8-hour or 24-hour run, whatever the case may be. One of the unique things that comes out of this systematic approach to validation is we can take uh, characters or aspects of that design phase, the, the IQ, the OQ, the PQ, and we can identify based on the intended use of our part risks associated with all of that selection process. So my, my, uh, my tool design, my uh, wall thickness considerations, the material that I'm molding, 
uh, get down into the process and understand uh, the significance of pressure response on my molding machine. Um, and all of those things can be signed a risk category. Uh, and then at the end, if you have a better, a good understanding on what areas you need to focus on overall to make sure that you end up with a validated process um, that's going to be easier and more efficient to manage. The result is data driven based on the four plastics variables. Understand the risk assessment. Minimize the paperwork involved. Um, and based on the four plastics variables, scientific molding have an improved quality at reduced cost at the end of the, the validation phase. Any question on that? I'll try to clarify issues if you have any questions at all. Um, move through that material pretty quickly, but hopefully just understanding how scientific approach, data-based approach in the four plastics variables can be utilized uh, in that validation process. Now another common problem for medical device molders is once they've validated a process, they're locked into a machine. And the reason that is typically the case is that the validation was done on machine dependent variables as opposed to plastic dependent variables. So we're going to look at a couple examples of those areas where, where uh, the process transfer is typically hung up. We're going to do our, our, our mold transfer based on the same plastics variables that we used in the validation phase the foundation of everything we're going to do. When we transfer a process based on this information versus machine information, that process transfer is going to duplicate the conditions of the part inside the cavity of the mold. This is uh, just a, kind of an excerpt from uh, a universal process setup sheet. Uh, it's one of the sheets that we've designed and we use in all of our courses at RJG. Um, and what it documents is plastic variables. We have our machine settings, but our machines are not identical. So what we've done is standardize those variables in a plastic, uh, from the plastics point of view. And then once we have that information, we can effectively convert that information back to the machine settings uh, on two different machines. One of the two primary areas um, that molders tend to make mistakes on is understanding, first of all, intensification ratio. And what intensification ratio means to plastic conditions inside the cavity of the mold for plastic pressure. Pressurization of the mold occurs during the filling phase dynamic pressure inside the mold, the pressure, the packing phase, static pressure inside the mold, and also back pressure. All of those things are influenced by the intensification ratio of your machine. The intensification ratio is simply the diameter of the cylinder, so we're be specific to a hydraulic machine now, the diameter of the cylinder to the diameter of the tip of the screw. So when you try to move a mold between two machines that has different barrel sizes, that's when this, this equation comes into play and can wreak havoc on a mold transfer. 